What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, back in the gym with a new lens. Maybe you notice it. Leave a comment if you do. What are we gonna talk about today? Something that everybody actually wants to know. How important are genetics for strength? And the answer, they're pretty fucking important. That's the short answer, you wanted it. Great video, love talking to you guys. I'll see you later, I gotta go train my calves. Peace. Oh, so you want the more technical explanation? Well, sit down then, enjoy yourself, and let's get right into it. Overall, I would say there are six important factors that determine your overall strength. So let's talk about them. Let's not cry over spilt milk, the fact that maybe we have too much, you know, type one muscle fibers, maybe that our torso's too long, our dicks are too big. What can't we change? First, muscle fiber types can't really influence these. Type one, more endurance based. Type two, more for power, right? They generate force quicker. It's very important in generating power, which has a component of speed when it comes to sprinting, when it comes to jumping, when it comes to Olympic weightlifting. But you know what they found? You know what they found? They found that elite powerlifters, the best of the best, actually have the exact same muscle fiber type distribution as the normal population. So, well, it might be important, right? Type two muscle fibers, it's not as important as you think, and it's not something you can really influence. If the two groups have the exact same, or roughly uh, the same fiber type distribution, it's not as important as you might think. The next thing we gotta talk about when it comes to genetics, segment lengths. How tall you are, your torso length, and your limb length. You can't change any of these, and we know that having, in general, a uh, longer limb, let's say your thigh, your femur, it being longer, you need more force in order to make it move. So. You might think to yourself, oh man, that kind of sucks. Good news is, is that taller individuals have more overall muscle mass or have more potential to add more muscle mass to their frame, right? They have more real estate. So yes, having a longer limb, right, makes it a little bit harder, but you can offset that partially with more muscle mass. There are different body types that are more optimal for different lifts, right? We have freaks. So we think about the deadlift. What makes a really good deadlift? Or what would be the perfect body type? Having big hands so the bar never rolls out, right? Having super long arms, having a, a relatively short torso so your arms are lower down so the lockout's easier so you have a shorter range of motion. That's a really good deadlifter. But if you think about it, somebody that is really freakishly good at one lift, like the deadlift, they have, you know, gorilla arms where they're super long the bench press is gonna be harder for them because they have those longer arms. So in general, when somebody has, you know, uh, freakish proportions for one lift, another lift usually suffers. But we can say that by and large, you want the most amount of muscle mass that you could put on for your frame. So if you're shorter and you fill out the same weight class, if you have more muscle mass, you're probably at an advantage. That's something that you can't change, however. Moving on to the final one that I want to talk about, muscle origin and insertion. We know when it comes to bodybuilding, we want for certain muscles shorter insertions, right? The shorter the insertion itself, when we flex with the bicep, it'll have a bigger peak. The longer one, it just doesn't look as good. When it comes to powerlifting, it's kind of the opposite. Without getting into the physics, I will make a video on this, I'm talking about moment arms and levers. I got a really crappy analogy that does work though. I'm gonna call it the rubber band analogy, and it's simply this. When we attach further down the limb or further away from the limb, it's like a rubber band where we're stretching out the total potential. When you slowly start stretching out, at first it has a little bit of snapback. The further you stretch it out, however, the more potential it has. The same thing can be said to where our muscles insert and the origin of them. But this is a factor that is very important. This is a factor that we can't influence, but it's something that will make a huge impact. Every single inch that it inserts further down has a bigger and bigger impact. These all have impacts in terms of your potential, but you can't do anything about them. Now, let's talk about what you can do, okay? Let's talk about motor learning factors. This is how neuromuscular, how efficient you are at the lifts, right? The coordination you have, the neuromuscular coordination that you have. So this is something that you can improve over time. When you first touch a barbell, it feels awkward as fuck. But if you notice, expert lifters, people that have been lifting for a long period of time, they're really good at lifting. And this is because they practice the movement. So when we talk about motor learning factors, it's about paying attention to your technique, getting the best possible technique for yourself as an individual, and then learning it over time, grooving in that pattern, right? Greasing the groove. So this is something we can influence. It comes from being astute, when you're lifting, paying attention to what you're doing. It comes from, you know, videotaping yourself, taking a look at the footage, and it comes from time under the bar. The next factor that you can change, muscle size, right? Everybody want to be big, but nobody want to lift that heavy ass weight. Having more muscle, we know this, all other things being equal, having more muscle gives you more potential for strength. I made a whole video on this, I'm gonna link it in the description, but in general, having more muscle can only benefit you. 
So get bigger, get a little stronger. Final point I want to talk about, motivation is actually really important. Arousal, fatigue, how focused you are in the gym. Once again, if you take a look at expert lifters, you'll notice when they lift, they are supremely focused. I'm not talking you know, about them yelling in the gym, making a big fuss. I'm talking about that laser-like focus. They have the motivation. They simply want to do it. Guys, at the end of the day, the thing I want to stress is while there are some important genetic factors, and you take a look at someone like Ed Cohen, you look at his hands, he will never let go of a deadlift because of those hands. There are genetic factors, and they're very important, and perhaps for those elite level lifters to become the best of the best, you do need favorable genetics. But for everybody that's just trying to improve themselves, trying to get stronger, trying to be the best possible version of themselves, Focus on what you can change. Focus on those three factors. Focus on you know being motivated, making sure you're not too fatigued, making sure that you give 100%, focusing on technique, focusing on form, focusing on time under the bar, and getting bigger overall. Those things you can change. Good programming, that's what you can do. So don't get caught up, don't cry over spilled milk, what you can't do. Focus instead on what you can do. I want you to post below, what do you think? Do you think genetics are important for strength? My answer is, yeah, they're important. But it doesn't matter at the end of the day. You gotta do you. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked the video and maybe you want some more in depth information when it comes to the levers, uh, how it actually works, the segment lengths, leave a comment below and I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.